What's up, guys? Welcome to the Bible Cast. I am forever impressed by the things the Holy Spirit reveals to me while reading Scripture. I mean, the same stories I've read 50 times before change right in front of my eyes to reveal some new answer to a mystery. It's completely awesome. This week, while reading the daily devotional that I post on the BibleCast website, God's Holy Spirit led me to another story we've all heard before, but this time it's like a plethora of underlying teaching came to my mind as I read. And as he teaches me, I like to talk about it on the Bible cast in hopes that the encouragement I receive piggybacks onto you as well. The story I'm talking about is in the book of Matthew, verses 14, 22 to 33 right after Jesus fed a multitude of people with just a few fish. Now, I'm getting technologically advanced here and using my cell phone because what's the point in having a handheld computer if you don't use it? Besides, my pastor does it, so don't judge me. <laughs> Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Now, hold on. Let me just give you a visual here. Jesus just heard about the death of his cousin, John the Baptist, and he was feeling a little upset about it, and he decided to take a little boat to a part of the desert there that wasn't really inhabited much, but the people heard about it, heard where he was going, so they wanted to go out and be with him. So they did, and he had compassion on them. So he started healing the sick and all that stuff. And then it came evening time, and there was no food out there. And Jesus took a basket of a few fish, and he fed 5,000 men plus women and children. Now, afterwards, he sent the disciples out across the sea by themselves while he dispersed the crowd. And it said, uh, after he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray, it said later that night he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. That means a storm in fancy Bible language, y'all. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them. So it's pretty late. You know, it's it's right before dawn, so I'm guessing like 2 o'clock in the morning or something. So shortly therefore, or shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Now hold on a second. These guys think they're seeing a ghost out there walking. Now, if anyone ever says God has no sense of humor, show them this scripture. The King James Version even says that Jesus would have walked right by him if they didn't hear him crying out in fear. <laughs> It's like the original Scare Tactics episode right here. <laughs> you know Evan had to have a good laugh on that one. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the water, and he, you know, he's, they think he's a ghost. So in verse 27, But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed in the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Okay, so... Jesus feeds a bunch of folks, sends the disciples across the Sea of Galilee while he handles the crowd, walks across the water to meet these guys in the middle, all after his cousin just got killed, and he calms a tempest storm all while doing it. Is there any wonder why they all worshipped him, saying that he was the son of God when he got in the boat? Here's the thing now, y'all. Why wouldn't Jesus just make the water calm before he sent them poor guys out there to freak out. I mean, he knew that was coming. Remember that Holy Spirit insight thing I was talking about earlier? Well, here's where bells and whistles started blowing. Yes, God did know this was going to happen this way, and he let it happen anyway for you and me. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> what I'm talking about is your understanding. 
Have you ever been in a situation which already seemed desolate enough, but just to add fuel to the fire, something else gets dumped on you on top of it? I can swear I just heard you say all the time. Yep, me too. But that's exactly what the disciples were experiencing out on the water that night. They were already afraid because of the massive waves of this storm. We're not talking small waves either. I don't know how many of you have been out sailing on the sea, but it's not like lake waves out there. The Sea of Galilee is huge. We're talking some big waves during a good storm. Then to add to their fear, here comes what they think is a ghost walking by. At this point, their faith is slammed to the floor and they are feeling hopeless. Sound familiar? How many tempest storms have you had to face? How many times do we bury our face in our hands and think, how can this be happening? And right then, bam, just when I went through a whole big bunch of debt, I lose my job. I'm fighting hard struggles at home already and now the kid calls from jail? <laughs> what do you mean you wrecked the other car? <laughs> Life is downright nasty at times, isn't it? In the words of my pastor, God never said he was going to make this life easy. He did say he'd be right there with us through the struggles, though. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. Oh, ye little faith, why did you doubt, he asked. The King James Version tells us that when Peter saw that the wind was boisterous, rambunctious or clamorous in Greek, he was afraid. And that's when he started to sink. See, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and started to look at his circumstances. He was excited and ambitious at first. He climbed right out of the safety of that boat on a leap of faith, but took his eyes off Christ when things weren't going the way he had planned. Look here. This story is for you. Have you had to take a leap of faith recently? I know some of you have. I know I have. What will that look like when things we planned on get a little turbulent, boisterous? Are we going to feel the wind and fear it? Or are we going to learn from Peter and hold fast to our faith in Jesus and know he's going to see us through to the other side, no matter what? When the disciples saw him, he said, Do not fear, it is I. If I can make a suggestion to you for this week, let it be this. Take a little piece of paper or a poster or something and write, Do not fear, it is I on it. Put it on the corner of your computer at work or on the dash of your car or something, somewhere where you know you're going to need a reminder where your focus should be and to know that he's got this. God is the only one who can get you through life's most difficult and turbulent storms. Rest in his strength and you will never sink. Speaking of turbulent life storms, on a side note today, I wanted to share an experience with you that I had last week. As most of you know, the BibleCast is a nonprofit that receives donations for a few different areas of ministry, one of which is homelessness. Now, you can check all that out on our website at www.thebiblecast.org. Over the last couple months, donations have come in enough to really make an impact on a few lives. I want to share a quick video of a few of the blessings your donations provided. Take a look. What's up, guys? Jim Guy here with the Bible Cast. Hey, I just want to uh, share with you what we're doing today. We're putting your donations to good use. Today, we're going out and we're handing out backpacks that are filled with tents, sleeping bags, pillows, and drinking straws and flashlights to some homeless people that were uh, that were hunting down here in Murfreesboro because of the donations that you give to the Bible cast, I want to share with you exactly what's happening with that money so you know that you are a part of changing people's lives. God bless you. Okay. 
Wow. Yeah, I know there's some guys back here. I just seen them. Hey, Ricky. Look down here. Look down here. There's where they're staying at. Come here. Let's go around this wall. Yeah, come here, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, this is something. Hey guys. Hey, hey man. <clears throat> How you guys doing? Hey man, I got a couple uh, backpacks for you here. How you guys doing back here? A couple days. Look. Yeah, man. Here, let me show you what. Let me show you what all we've got. All right, so. How many of y'all are there out here uh, right now? Me and him, and he just showed up about okay. like four days ago. Or so. Okay. Well, check this out. Um, I, I have a ministry called the Bible Cast, okay? And it is a podcast, and I have uh, several people that send in their donations and everything. So uh, the donations that they send in... Um, God has been nice. He's been awesome, man. He's just supplied. So what we did is we went ahead and we got a couple things. This here is a, uh, it's a two person tent. Um, that it's actually a pretty, a pretty good tent. This is a, a camping pillow. It, it just squishes down in there, but man, it's flannel. It's, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, this you know, this backpack is a 60-liter backpack. It's pretty good. Here's a, a, a Bible, yeah. And I just want to, I just want to give it to you guys, you know. It, it's, man, let the glory be to God because He is moving in the hearts of my viewers and He's He's moving in the hearts of, of all of us, you know. And He's just changing lives as as He goes, you know. It's It's awesome. But there's, uh, listen, it's God, God supplies for, for all of us. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, the one, one thing it's, that's wonderful about, about being down is that, uh, God promises that he's going to lift us up, you know, and, uh, that's, that's just how it works. So there's, there's a good future. That's all we got. That's right. Hope, faith, hope, and love, man. This, this little light, it's not real strong, but check it out. You just wind it up, and it charges, and it, charges it you know, and it makes it brighter and, and brighter, and then it, it never goes dead. And it's also got solar, so if it sits out in the sun, it charges. Yeah, it charges. It charges up itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a little help, for, a little help at night. Yeah. Two-person tent. Uh, it's a pretty decent tent, man. I broke one out, you know, to stretch it out, make sure it was quality. It is. It'll keep you dry at night as long as they, you don't touch the inside, you know, because it'll rain on you, drip through. But uh, the the backpack itself is a 60 liter, and it's got hard uh, stabilizers, so you can carry it long distances. It's got the belt strap around the front. Um, uh, there's a sleeping bag in here that's a 20 degree mummy sack okay. oh mummy sack oh yeah, yeah i don't know what all about that yeah yeah that's that's pretty that's pretty good pull it out here you can get it out from the bottom too but you got that all right um in the back here is a uh here's what here's a card you know here's one of my cards for the bible cast you have a bible study uh, yeah, yeah, he's he I'll had Bible duty. yeah he yeah. holds one at his house actually in uh, in between Smyrna oh, and Murfreesboro. Yeah, yeah, it's right. good stuff, man. Uh, I don't know if you guys got any phones or not, but uh, yeah, the Bible cast I I send that out on YouTube. There's a card in that one too. This is a camping pillow. It's a it's a good flannel pillow. You know that's that thing's pretty comfortable. <laughs> Just 
stuff it back in there. And this thing here, check this out. This is, man, I've seen this and I had to get them. Uh, it's a uh, life straw. This thing has, it's a water filtration straw. You can literally go down, look at the, look at the picture there. See that, dude? You, can, you hold it in the water for a little bit and it soaks up and absorbs uh, water, any kind of water, from anywhere. And it, I was drinking the damn stream water the other night. Oh, yeah, well, really? Really? that's yeah. what I'm saying. Hey, I was thirsty. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. That's what I'm saying. Now you can do it and you don't have to worry about growing a second head. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just coming for it. Now. Yeah, but uh, and I've, I've got a couple little Bibles in there, too, I'm going to put, put in here. But uh, if it's okay with you guys, I'd like to give these to you. You know, be great. Could you I put it in use? Absolutely. 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 Well, brother, it is yours. It is yours. Man, what an experience that was. I'm going to be totally transparent here. I was completely scared out of my socks going down there, y'all. I really was. My whole life, I had preconceptions about how dangerous homeless people were. But God truly opened my eyes to the reality that they are mostly just like us. Just down and depressed in life. One guy we met even fought in the Gulf War. Life just crushed these guys. And when we offered your gift to them, they even broke down. It was really quite humbling to behold. And the camera footage doesn't even begin to show how happy they were. God bless you for your donations. You really are helping to let the light of Christ shine to those in need. One guy told me, right when you start to lose faith, here comes someone doing what we're doing, and it lifts them right up again. That got me choked up a little bit, to be honest with you. I told him it was God moving through the hearts of the people watching the Bible cast, and that's absolutely true. With every dollar you give to the Bible cast ministry, God's message of love is being carried out for sure. I pray God blesses you a hundredfold. This week, let God's light be your guiding light. Hold fast to your faith and devotion to His Word. Be encouragement to someone else in your life and let God's Spirit guide you to reach the unreachable. Don't let circumstance get between you and Jesus. Don't give up. Remember, Jesus said, do not fear, it is I. Take care, everyone. And don't give up on your New Year's resolutions either. <laughs> May God bless us all. Have a wonderful rest of the week.